Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 5. A storm-battered city in the Northern Valley is hit again. Good evening and thank you for joining us tonight. People living in the Grafton community are rolling up their sleeves again, cleaning up what a storm left behind last night. Driving through town, the damage is obvious. Tree limbs and branches across roads in the parks and trees in several neighborhoods buckled under the powerful winds. And although people here are still cleaning up from the storm that passed through about two and a half weeks ago, they know this latest one could have been much worse. We were pretty fortunate not to get into the hail. You know, we did get some winds and some limbs down, a uh, few trees this, uh, that came down in some of our parks around town, uh, but nearly not near the damage that we had two and a half weeks ago. Tonight on Valley News Live at 6, we'll show you some towns in the Northern Valley that were hammered by hail storms that lasted more than 20 minutes. And also, we're dealing with some extreme heat out there today, and that brings the potential for storms to fire up. Right now, though, there's a hot grill in Dilworth that's ready for a backyard barbecue. That's where we find Hutch Johnson with a look at tonight's forecast. Hutch? Andrea, it is steamy out here. The sun finally came out. Temperatures are rising and enough humidity to fuel some mighty strong storms. But we are in Dilworth at John Schultz, the big winner's house tonight. Ready for the Cashwise barbecue? We are. We are. It's a beautiful day now. And who did you invite? Uh, we have people coming all the way from West Fargo and all the way out to Cormorant. Cool. And we have the whole area covered now. And you told them to bring their appetite. We brought their appetite, yep. Very good. And where'd you sign up to win, John? We signed up at the Cash Wise in East 10. Okay, super duper. Well, we're looking forward to the stakes getting on, and more people will be showing up as we speak. Here's what you can plan for with all this talk about steamy weather. A chance for some strong storms are just beginning to fire on the radar out to the west. As we take a look, there's an actual tornado warning in effect out there in the western and central Dakotas. Now, these storms are rotating a little bit. Bit. There is so much fuel in the atmosphere in the form of moisture that any storms that form tonight could produce very large hail like last night. Three to four inch diameter hail, gusty straight line winds, and a few tornadoes will be possible. It's way out west now. Our western counties in a severe thunderstorm watch until 11 o'clock. And oh yeah, there's the heat warnings and advisories throughout the valley. Those extend into tomorrow as well. Here's what you can plan for this evening. I think quiet for a little while here in the Southern Valley, but the heat indices will be quite warm. Look at Fargo, feels like 99. How about Roseau, feeling like 105 degrees up there? And 105, the current heat index in Valley City. Air temperatures will hover near 90 degrees for the next couple of hours. Our thunderstorm chances will increase as we get into the late evening hours. and. That's when your storm team will be hard at work, and uh, we'll be back with your hour-by-hour -hour forecast on where these storms are headed and likely to head here in just a few moments. Andrea? All right. Thank you, Hutch. As the temperature continues to rise, many say they are staying indoors to beat the heat. Valley News Team's Ashley Bishop spoke with people about ways that you can keep cool, especially if you use a wall or window AC unit. Besides jumping in the pool, you may be cranking your air conditioning. A little wall unit in my apartment that I have running pretty much most of the time. Many wall window AC units can cool down a room, but if you don't provide regular maintenance, you could run into trouble. But have you done any maintenance? No, I haven't touched it. There's a, there's a little change filter light that's on, but I don't know what that is. Yeah, clean the filter. Uh, just make sure that it's uh, you know running properly. All cooling systems operate on airflow, and if you have a dirty filter, your airflow is, is almost cut in half. Wagner says people can slide the unit out of the shell and clean the coils, but be careful around the electrical areas. Experts say it shouldn't get wet. So a lot of people think that you slap a unit in there, it's going to run forever, but maintenance is key with, with any kind of mechanical equipment. Wagner says yearly maintenance is recommended. They, they can find the little things that are wrong that when it gets hot like this become big things. Ashley Bishop, Valley News Live. Now, if you can't take the heat in your home, you can go cool down at the public libraries or malls. Those businesses say people are welcome to hang out, but they do ask uh, that you follow policies and they do not allow sleeping in those locations. A showdown is brewing between the State Department of Parks and Recreation and a township board near Walhalla, North Dakota. Some board members and landowners are complaining that a state-run trail system for ATV riders is causing big problems in the Pembina, in the scenic Pembina Gorge. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson shows us what's happening. 
On any given weekend, 30 to 100 ATV riders from Winnipeg to Grand Forks hit the state trail system in the beautiful Pembina Gorge. It's 22 miles of ATV trails that are interconnected with township roads. That's the problem, according to some people. When rain shuts down the trail system, riders still show up wrecking township roads and other property that are not part of the state trail system. They don't enforce anything when it rains. They close their trail and walk away. So it uh, messes up your township roads? Right, right. And there was part of our contract where they would give us some maintenance funding to help out with that, and we haven't seen a nickel in that maintenance fund. Yes, we have four-wheelers that will cross across our seeded fields. We have, uh, have people, they'll have a run, and there'll be seven no warning trespassing signs ripped down on an eighth of a mile road. When I call the state, I've called up to seven times in one day. They won't respond. Mike Dury of State Parks and Recreation is in charge of the trail system. He says he's not sure what the problem is. He says he and another deputy spend a lot of time on weekends patrolling the entire trail system. And he says he's been receiving very few complaints. In fact, he says they've been receiving a lot of rave reviews from folks who use the trail system. Are you finding many people that are causing problems of uh, drinking or driving off trails or... we don't we don't run into it a whole bunch you know we're more of a i mean we're really an education agency we want to make sure that you know people are learning about the rules or learning the regulations and and once it gets to the point where they maybe people aren't understanding that then yeah we take an enforcement action and if they say there's not complaints they just that's just another lie because i've drove to their office i mean it's and they're more concerned about not hurting anybody's feelings or looking like they're going to be tough in enforcement because they want people out here. It's turned into a clash that now has the township board threatening to close their roads to ATVs and, in effect, close access to the ATV trails and all the people who use them. From Wahala, North Dakota, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. What's expected to be a heated meeting will be held next week regarding the township complaints about ATVs and whether they have the actual authority to close access to the state trails. And of course, we'll keep you updated. If you need help uncovering an issue in your community, call our whistleblower hotline at 237-6576 and leave your tip. A member of our investigative team will get on the case and go to work to expose the truth. Police are hoping a woman who was stabbed overnight in Moorhead can give them details about her attacker. But so far, they say she's not cooperating. The stabbing happened around 11 last night in the 1600 block of 20th Street South. The woman's injuries are not life-threatening. The community of Thief River Falls, Minnesota, is gathering tonight to remember a teenager who died. 14-year-old Gannon Halick was severely injured after being hit by a truck Monday night. He was taken by ambulance and later airlifted to Fargo, where he died. People in Gannon's grade say they're holding a candlelight vigil tonight at 7 in LB Hearts Park. Candles will be available for people to light in honor of Halick. His classmates will also be collecting donations to help cover funeral arrangements. The Archdiocese of St. Paul and Minneapolis is apparently holding up its end of a far-reaching agreement designed to keep children safe and out of the hands of abusive priests. Today, Ramsey County announced its dropping criminal charges filed against the Archdiocese. The charges involved allegations that the Archdiocese turned a blind eye to repeated misconduct. The judge and county attorney praised the Archdiocese for a training program where everyone who works with children has to go through criminal background checks. They also undergo specialized training. At this point, over 500 active clergy have completed the program. The Archdi Archdiocese has agreed to make a public admission of wrongdoing in the alleged cover-up. It's not something you expect to see at a Minnesota lake, but officials snapped this photo of their big catch. Authorities found the alligator in Hardy Lake near the shoreline, which is close to Brainerd. The animal was taken to the Safari North Wildlife Park. In a Facebook post, the Cass County Sheriff's Office said this wasn't the first time they have received reports of an alligator in the area. Good news for future fishing in North Dakota. Officials say walleye stocking has wrapped up. And it was a record year for the state. Here's a look at some of the numbers. Over 150 lakes across North Dakota were stocked with about 11 million fingerlings. 
Fingerlings are small, typically about an inch to an inch and a quarter long. Because they are so small, anglers will have to wait a couple of years for the fingerlings to grow to a catchable size. To see a complete list of all fish stockings across North Dakota, head to valleynewslive.com and click on the hot button.